Are you looking to get your real estate license in the state of Arizona? Well, you found the perfect video because in this video, we're going to break a complete step-by-step -step guide down on how to get your real estate license in Arizona. We're going to go over some of the costs associated with getting licensed in Arizona. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you some quick tips on how to pick the right brokerage so you have the highest chance of success. Let's jump right into the video. Welcome to the Empire of Real Estate YouTube channel. My name is Chris, and before we get started, I want to offer you my free How to Get Your Real Estate License and Start Your Real Estate Career Guide. You can find that in the description down below. So if you click that, you can get your download today. And a lot of the stuff that we talk about in this video will be inside that guide plus a couple additional things. So definitely check that out. Lastly, stick around to the end because I am going to give you some important tips that you're going to need to pick the right brokerage and have the highest chance of success. If you didn't already know, being a real estate agent comes with a super high failure rate. This business is packed with opportunity, but 87% of agents that get their license actually fail out of the business. So to avoid that, definitely take those tips and I hope it helps. Let's dive right into the step-by-step -step guide to help you get your license. The very first step is meeting the basic requirements. In Arizona, you have to be 18 years old or older and you have to have a high school diploma or it's a GED equivalent. Next, you have to be a legal resident in the United States. And you're going to have to complete a background check to make sure you have nothing on your record that would prevent you from getting your real estate license. Next step is doing your pre-license education classes. Now, you're going to have to get these done with a state-approved school, but in Arizona, the classes are 90 hours of pre-license education. Now, I know this sounds like a lot, and you're right, it is a lot. But the good news is, is you can get this done online these days. And we do have a recommendation for a great real estate school and it's called Real Estate Express. There's an affiliate link down in the description below and check them out, see what kind of sales they have going because they do a really good job. Their courses are comprehensive, but you can still do it at your own pace and on your own time. So if you're working a nine to five job, this could be the perfect thing for you. The next step is actually passing your real estate exam. After you spend the time studying, going through your real estate courses and making sure that you're ready to take the test, it's time to actually schedule with Pearson View and take the test. Now on test day, you're gonna wanna bring a couple basic things. You need two forms of identification and you could bring a basic non-scientific calculator for the math portion of the exam. Now the exam is three hours. You have three hours to take the exam, so don't rush through this. You have plenty of time. In fact, many people finish the exam early and one of the biggest mistakes people make is they try to rush through the exam and they end up not reading the questions the right way and they get confused and they answer the questions wrong, fail the exam, and they have to do it all over again. To avoid this, take your time, make sure you read each question multiple times, and then submit the best answer you have. Next, you want to submit your application to get licensed. At this point, you already completed your pre-license education, you did your fingerprinting and background check, and you passed your real estate exam. So at this point, you are ready to submit your application for your real estate license. In this case, you're going to submit this to the Arizona Department of Real Estate, and they're going to process this and then get back to you. So when you submit this, you're going to want to submit it with three different things. The very first thing is your state approved pre-license classes that you completed, your past exam, and a copy of your background check that you passed. Step number five, it is back to school. Believe it or not, once you get approved for your license within the first 12 months, you have to go back and take post-license education classes. In this case, it's only 30 hours, but you do need to get those done. Next, you're gonna have to pick a real estate broker to hang your license with. When you're a brand new agent, you're gonna have to find a brokerage to hang your license with, and that's a requirement. So many agents, what they'll do is they'll just kind of look for the brokerage with the highest commission split, and I did that too when I started, and it was a big mistake. Luckily, it worked out, and I ended up landing at a brokerage that had a great mentor and a great mentor program, but, with that being said, that doesn't always happen. And the proof is in the pudding. With a 87% failure rate, most agents that get into this business do not make it. So picking the right brokerage is essential. So what I wanna do is I wanna give you some quick tips that I wish I knew 
when I got licensed. The very first thing is finding a brokerage with a good mentor in place. This is a person that you can call at any time during the week, pick up the phone and say, hello, I need help with X, Y, and Z. And they're going to help you. Real estate is a really complex business and there's a lot of different moving pieces and a lot of unique situations. So as a new real estate agent, this might be a lot to handle and having a experienced mentor that you can call is a game changer and it's something that you definitely need when you're starting out. Even if it's just for the first three to five deals, this can be a huge help. Next, you want to find a brokerage that has a training system in place. Having a good training system is essential. Just like having a mentor, you need something that's going to walk you through step by step the exact process to take you from X where you start to Y where you want to be. And that's the most important thing because this business is filled with a lot of roadblocks and a lot of ups and downs and you need to know what to do next. And if that mentor is not available for whatever reason, um, you, you need something to follow. You need some kind of a guide that's going to give you an outline of where you're at and where you're going so you can kind of see the progress that you're making and something just kind of to reference back to while you're going through this process of becoming a full-time agent. The next thing is ask how they are going to help you get business. Many brokerages don't really have anything in place to help you get business. You have to ask certain questions. So some brokerages will say, just contact your friends and family and rely on your sphere of influence. And this business is called SOI. Now, some people build tremendous businesses just from using this alone. But in my case, that wasn't going to work. When I started this business, I was 22 and my friends and family, they weren't buying houses. So I needed to do something else and I ended up you know, buying leads and doing different things and luckily it worked out. But for a lot of agents, it doesn't work out. So you need to get with a brokerage that's going to fit the type of marketing and the type of business that you wanna build because this is one of the most important things. Without a way to get business and without a way to market, you're not gonna have any houses to sell and your business might never get off the ground. Last but not least, do not focus on splits. Splits are a conversation to have later down the road, but when you first start out, they do not matter because 100% of nothing is still nothing. This is one of the biggest takeaways that I think new agents should focus on. And I know it's not what you want to hear. It's not what I wanted to hear, but as somebody that's experienced, I can tell you this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see in this business. Next, let's dive into the actual cost to get started. So you might be wondering, this sounds great. I'm ready to go, but what is it going to cost me to get started? Well, this is a question that so many people have, and I had the same question. The good news is this business can provide tremendous upside and it doesn't cost that much money to start. So let's go through a quick breakdown of some of the costs that you're going to face when starting this business up. The very first thing is your pre-licensed education classes. The good news is these are fairly inexpensive for the amount of classroom time that you get. You get 90 hours of classroom time and roughly you're going to spend around three to six hundred dollars depending on the sales that are going on. Again, definitely click the affiliate link down below. We recommend you check them out. They have some really good sales on online classes and they do a really good job. Once you get through your pre-licensed classes, you're going to do your exam. So your exam fee in this case is about $63. Now, if you fail, you're going to have to retake the test and that's going to cost you another $63, but hopefully you pass it the first time around. So we're going to aim for $63. Next, let's talk about the fingerprint fee. So you want to get your background check done and that's going to cost you about $50. Once you pass the exam, it's time to do your license application fee. So at this point, you're almost ready to get licensed and this application fee is going to cost you about $250 in the state of Arizona. Another fee you're going to be looking out for is the background check fee and this is about $25. Then we're going to talk about the continuing education. I would budget about $50 to $200 for this and this is that part of the continuing education that you need to complete within the next 12 months after you get your license. So all in all, I would budget around $800 to $1,000 to get this business off the ground and then and as you go through the career, it could get, you know, there could be more fees and more things you have to pay. Like for example, e and insurance, I would budget about 200 to $500 per year for that. But your broker that you work with is going to walk, walk through all those expenses with you and you'll have a better idea. But just to give you a rough idea on how much to budget to get this business off the ground and get started, these are the numbers that I would use. So tell me what questions you have. 
Tell me what questions that you need help with. And last but not least, let me know if you're going to get started with your real estate career and get your Arizona real estate license this year. Drop it in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing from you and I hope you have an awesome week.